Hello and welcome to Language Learning Made Easy. In today's lecture, I'm going to teach you Not Marble, Not the Gilded Monuments by William Shakespeare. It is also referred to as Sonnet 55 and it is a part of the famous sequence of 154 sonnets that were published in 1609. Now this sonnet, like many other sonnets, has been addressed to the young man or it is, you can say, dedicated to the young man who is also known as the fair youth. Now it is believed that most of the sonnets that were written by William Shakespeare were either dedicated to the fair youth or to the dark lady. This one particularly is addressed to the fair youth. Now who are these people who are beneath these titles is not known to anyone. There have been many investigations, there have been many studies, many critical uh, you know, engagements that have happened in the past but nobody has been able to unravel their identities. So we just need to focus on what is there that he has to say or to address this person referred to as the fair youth. Let's go ahead. Okay, now let's start with the poem. Not marble nor the gilded monuments of princes shall outlive this powerful rhyme, but you shall shine more bright in these contents than unswept stone besmeared with sluttish time. It's very important to look at each and every line to be able to understand the theme that is undercurrent this particular sonnet. So not marble nor the gilded monuments. That means all those monuments that have been made with the finest marble, right? All those monuments that have been made with the finest marble and the monuments that are gold plated. Gilded means covered with gold. So all these monuments that have been made with the finest marble and appear to be the strongest of all, appear to be laid in with gold, they offer no protection against this ravenous appetite of time. Shall outlive, outlive this powerful rhyme, but you shall shine more bright in these contents. That means the most uh, imposing statues or palaces or these kind of monuments, they will eventually fall prey to the ravenous appetite of time. They will crumble away at one point of time, despite their seeming solidity. But what is not going to happen? You will never succumb to the ravages of time. You shall outlive through this powerful rhyme that I have created. And by this he means that the power of poetry is more than the power of time. When wasteful war shall statues overturn, that means when these wars which are utterly useless, which are utterly waste wasteful, which, are, which have the capability of destroying the world at large, they are going to destroy everything altogether. When people are going to get into wars, they are definitely going to devastate everything around them. They are going to devastate statues, they are going to overturn everything, they are going to cause uh, complete havoc all over and broils root out the work of masonry. When the world is going to be engaged in wasteful wars and broils are going to be a part of the wars. Broils are squabbles or any menial fights that you get to see. When you're going to see fights all over, when you're going to see these broils coming up every now and then when people are going to be getting into sort of arguments, squabbles and fights, then what is going to happen? It's going to root out the work of masonry. Root out the work of masonry means masonry Masonry is uh, work that is uh, associated with stones. So masons are people who work with stones, right? So when these kind of things are going to happen, it's going to cause huge devastation, huge destruction to life and property. It's also going to destroy everything which has been created out of stone. Nor Mars is sword, nor wars, quick fire shall burn the living record of your memory. That means we are talking about the devastating or the ravenous power of time over here, these wasteful wars here, and these squabbles that will come into the picture. All these things are definitely going to upturn the world. But what is not going to remain, what is going to remain constant or what is not going to uh, be affected by these kind of changes that happen in the world at large or these kind of uh, destruction that happens in the world at large, it's you. Even Mars, who is considered to be the god of war and his sword, right? Everything, you know, is considered to be the epitome of power and strength. Even if he comes into the picture and if he engages into war, he will not be able to destroy your memory. He will not be able to destroy you because you do not live in person. You live through the work that I have produced in this sonnet, right? So as long as people are going to be there, they are going to get, get into wars, they are going to get into 
unnecessary engagements they are definitely going to be uh, you know fighting with each other for power for strength for uh, you know for showing up of everything that they falsely claim to be but you will continue to live forever why why will you be immortalized why will you be eternalized it is because i have immortalized you in my work so nothing can crumble away the power of sonnet nothing can take away or uh, you know root out the the power that i have endowed you through my literary work moving on against death and all oblivious enmity shall you pace forth that means against death and oblivious enmity you know the enmity or enmity means uh, animosity right so enmity which is forgetful of everything and so seeks to destroy everything so when you forget about everything and you just you are just on a destruction spree when you when all you want is death when all you want is revenge when all you want is fight when all you want is destruction then people are going to forget about everything else when they are going to be obsessed with power when they are going to be obsessed with this with this uh, urge to kill and be the most uh, powerful and the most uh, you know strongest of all then then also you are going to pace for that means your memory shall continue to be even when people are going to be obsessed with the power uh, of being the most ultimate uh, power in the world then also things are going to work in your favor then also you will pace onward your praise shall still find room even in the eyes of all posterity now why does he say that you are going to be uh, remembered even then or why do you think you are going to surpass these ravages caused by time it is clear that you know this is a literary work it's not going to be it, it's an intangible thing it's something that has been produced and it's going to be passed on from one person to the other from one generation to be to the other from posterity you know from one generation to the other if one thing is being passed on like a legacy it's going to remain forever it's going to be talked about it's going to be uh, a matter of discussion and when something becomes a matter of talk or discussion it never ceases to be or it never dies so here also the same thing is happening that people are going to be obsessed with power they are going to be on this uh, destructive spree at all times when they are going to be obsessed with this uh, thought of being the most powerful in the world then also you will not cease to be then also you shall pace onward because you will be talked about because you are going to be remembered by the future generation they are going to talk about you whenever they are going to read this sonnet and if this sonnet sustains the ravages of time obviously you through this sonnet will also sustain the ravages of time you will also live and outlive the destruction that is otherwise caused by the sluttish time so till the judgment that yourself arise you live in this and dwell in lovers eyes that means i am immortalizing my love for you through this sonnet and even on the day of judgment now according to christianity it is believed that on the judgment day everyone is going to be uh, you know everyone is going to be uh, given whatever they deserve after life right if they've done good deeds in life they are going to be uh, given things accordingly and if they are going to be if they've done things which have been bad or which have been considered evil then they are going to be penalized accordingly so even on the judgment day when everything is done you are going to become eternal you are going to live in the paradise you're going to find a place for yourself in the heavens why because you will be able to outlive all the ravages of time you have not done anything to ravage anyone's life you have not done anything to destroy anyone's life you have not done anything to uh, be able to crumble away with the with the sluttish time you will forever be and with you in this sonnet my love for you will also retain okay people will always remember how loyal my love was people will always remember that this sonnet has not just immortalized you but also my love for you so my eyes the 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 love for you in my eyes shall continue to spark it shall continue to shine it will continue to ever uh, you know create that everlasting impact on posterity on people when uh, even on the day of judgment okay so this is where this beautiful sonnet ends now don't worry we are going to go back to this line by line this was just a the, you know cursory explanation of the sonnet 
let's understand what are the two points that we have to understand and remember in the first quatrain now you have to remember that a sonnet is a 14 line uh, poem right it's a 14 line poem and it is divided into four parts four lines first stanza four lines second stanza four lines go for the third stanza and then we have the two lines that are left at the end and they are referred to as couplet okay so the first three uh, stanzas four lines each are referred to as quatrains okay the four line stanzas are referred to as quatrains so we have three quatrains and one couplet in this uh, sonnet that constitute this sonnet okay now let's look at the important points that have come up as we have read the first quatrain the first quatrain is not marble not the gilded monuments of princes that means all these people who have created uh, this uh, you know these monuments they shall outlive this powerful rhyme but you shall shine more bright in these contents than unswept stone besmeared with sluttish time so neither expensive stone statues nor gold covered monuments to the ruling class will live as long as this mighty poem why will they not live i have already told you the reason that they cannot no matter how imposing these statues are no matter how uh, beautifully they've been laden with gold but they will never be able to protect themselves against the ravages caused by time against the ravenous appetite of time so this mighty poem shall continue to live despite all odds now the second point that we have learned from this particular quatrain is that through this sonnet you will shine brightly than any statue uh, ruined by time. Why do we call time sluttish here? It is because it does not comply with anyone, right? Time does not belong to anyone. It lacks loyalty. So time is not going to be true to you. It will continue to do whatever it has to and it's going to, uh, you know, it's like uh, why, why do we think that we should create statues for ourselves? It is to outlive the ravages of time because we want to be remembered why did they why did they create why did princes or why did these powerful people wanted uh, why did they want to create these kind of monuments because they always wanted to be remembered by posterity they wanted to leave a mark in the pages of history but the irony is that time is so strong and powerful it's the mightiest of all that it's not going to leave any trace of your being there in the part of history right it's not going to leave any trace when it's going to come to its devastating effect but here the sonnet cannot be devastated at all because it's a literary device right therefore he says that through this sonnet i have not just immortalized you but i have immortalized you against all those gilded monuments that have been created by these rulers keeping the the power and mightiness of their uh, of their being in mind all right moving it next to when wasteful war shall statues overturn and broils root out the work of masonry nor mars his sword nor wars quick fire shall burn the living record of your memory that means when wars come along and topple statues when wars are going to come into the picture and they are going to topple means upturn they are going to destroy or they are going to upturn statues conflicts are going to uh, you know undo the unskilled work of masons now conflicts when squabbles conflicts or uh, any sort of arguments is what we refer to as broils they are going to root out the work of masonry that means they are going to undo the skilled work of masons they are going to destroy them altogether not even mars who is considered to be the god of war or war speedy fire shall destroy this living memory of you it is not going to cause any harm to you you will forever continue to be you will always remain fresh and you will always remain uh, as uh, beautiful as you are in the present uh, in in the future as well defeating the forces of death and indiscriminate hostility that means that this sonnet is going to defeat the forces of death it's going to go against death all together it's going to defeat death which is the ultimate truth of life and it's also going to defeat indiscriminate hostility indiscriminate means excessive hostility so world is going to be a witness to all these things and still when the world is going to be burning in the fire of rage revenge fight and broils you will be the one who will march onwards praise of you will always have a place among the future generation until the forces of history bring this world to end times that means you will continue to be a matter of discussion you will always be remembered you will always be talked about because by the future generation by posterity 
till the world comes to an end. And even if the world comes to an end, what is going to happen at the day of judgment when you will be resurrected? That means you're going to be brought back to life. Even on the day of judgment when everyone is going to be penalized for, rewarded for what they've done, for their deeds and actions uh, done during their lifetime, you shall be resurrected. You will forever find a place in the paradise by God. You're going to be eternalized even then because you have lived through this beautiful work that I have created. Now, this is what the sonnet is all about. Let's look at the theme of this particular sonnet. It's poetry and immortality. How poetry is going to immortalize you as well as your beloved. The so sonnet promises speakers, lover, everlasting life through verse. So this verse has been able to immortalize, it has been able to eternalize, it has been able to make his love and the life of the lover eternal, permanent, everlasting. All right? It's not as temporary as you get to see in material world. Poetry has the power to grant immortality. This also tells us that poetry is so strong, the work of art is so strong that it can never ever fall prey to any ravages that are caused by time. It is not going to fall prey to whatever time has in mind for you. It will always have the power to give you that immortal shine that you keep looking in your lifetime. Okay, now how can we forget the poetic devices that are there beautifully uh, embedded in each and every uh, quatrain and couplet of this particular sonnet. Gilded monuments, posterity, Mars and time, they all are personified. Gilded monuments because gilded, covered with gold. This is something that we always associate with human beings. Okay, posterity has been uh, given a sight. They will be able to see you through the ravages of time. They will be able to visualize you. They will be able to remember you through the, post uh, through the ravages of time. And that is why it has been personified. So posterity is future generation which has been given a sight. Sight is the attribute of human beings and that is why it is personification. Mars, he is the god of war, even if he comes into the picture, so you have to understand that he is going to do things that are expected of human beings in a war, right? That is why he has been personified over here. Time has been referred to as sluttish. And as a slut, just as the beauty of a slut fades away, and it fades away over the period of time, it brings about a great, you know, you, it brings about great changes, so does the time usher in great changes. And that is why sluttish time is personified. So three instances of personification in the sonnet. Alliteration has been used in wasteful wars, powerful princes, per, per, pace and praise, shall and still. Enjambment. Enjambment means when one idea trickles over from one line to the other and does not come to an end, it continues to be, okay? It continues to show its existence through uh, a few lines, right? So not marble, not the gilded monuments. This line till sluttish time. So this entire quatrain is written in one go because one idea is mirroring from one to the one line to the other. It is uh, trickling over from one line to the other and that is why this quatrain itself is an example of enjambment. And then we have imagery. Imagery you have to visualize. What is imagery? When you, it's a poetic device wherein you are trying to visualize everything that has been written down in verses. So not marble, not the gilded monuments of princes shall outlive, outlive this uh, powerful rhyme. You have to remember, you have to visualize all these things that are happening in the poem, okay? You have to imagine how it's going to be when the posterity is going to remember uh, this beautiful person who has been immortalized through this sonnet. You have to imagine how destruction is going to happen. Everything is going to be visually described here, right? So this is why it is imagery. Nor Mars, nor his sword. This line is also using imagery in itself. Then we have epithet. Epithet is an adjective, okay, or a describing word that you give to describe something better to a noun. Sluttish describes time. So we call time sluttish and sluttish is an epithet. Sluttish means it does not belong to anyone. It's going to cause ravage to you. No matter what your plans are, no matter how immortal you decide yourself to become, but you're not going to be so because time is going to be the mightiest of all. Then wasteful wars. Wars have been described as wasteful and statues are going to be besmeared. 
then we have the rhyme scheme let's take a look at the rhyme scheme first quatrain second quatrain third quatrain all follow different rhyme schemes a b a b c d c d e f e f is the rhyme scheme that you get to see in all three quatrains and uh, if you take a look at the couplet then it's ha it has been written in g g rhyming scheme it follows g g rhyming scheme Okay, so this is it about the poem and this beautiful sonnet comes to an end with this. Take a look at the questions and if you still find anything doubtful, you can write to me in the comment section. Thank you. Have a nice day. All the best.